Hello again, this is Phil Thomas from New Era Systems. Today I'm looking at a 4 watt NJT buck, KU band, frequency range 14 to 14.5 gig. Before I start, let's just look at some of the components that make up this test. Attached to the back of the buck, the part of the buck that transmits the power to the amplifier, there is a cross guide coupler. The cross guide coupler allows me to monitor the amount of output, the power coming from the back of the buck. The cross guide couplers are tuned by frequency. At 14 gig, there is an offset of 39.88. I call it an offset, that's not really correct. It's an attenuation. So the output from the buck is reduced by 39.88 at 14 gig, and then I can measure that over the power meter that I have attached. This is the head of the power meter. Now behind the cross guide coupler, there is this strange radiator looking affair. What this does, it absorbs the power being generated by the amplifier and stops it from filling the room or the environment. It's a safety feature. And what it does, it takes the RF power and it turns it into heat. These things can get extremely hot, not at four watts. This is probably capable of handling two to 300 watt. But when you start putting a lot of power into it, these can, things can get way too hot even to touch. The buck requires 24 volt DC. It also needs 10 meg reference plus the signal that we're going to check. The signal is what drives the amplifier. One of the jobs today is, is to see how much usable power there is in this 4 watt buck. I've tested this before, so I know that it's going to go up considerably above 4 watts, but that doesn't mean that it's usable you get into something called saturation, similar to audio distortion. If you wind up the volume of a radio, it gets to a certain stage where it's too loud for the speakers and you get distortion. This is not a very technical or accurate description, but this is how I think of it anyway. Now looking at this power meter, there's a couple of things. In the top left hand corner, you'll see 14.2 gig. It's actually 14.25, but this the little meter there doesn't show it. The power meter needs to know what the frequency is in order to register it accurately. And at the moment it's showing 1.1 watts. Now let's look down at the modem. The input is currently minus 30 dBm, so that's negative 30. It's got 30 dBm of attenuation in here. So I'm going to increase power from minus 30 to minus 29. So I press the up arrow, enter. And now we're seeing a change on the power meter. It's going up to 1.39. I'm going to do the same thing again. I've got to move it by a couple of increments because I already know that this particular amplifier is going to top out at somewhere in the five and a half watt range. And so rather than going through step by step, I'll just take some much larger leaps. I wouldn't normally do this because we need to know where saturation is, but I have prepared a separate spreadsheet where I can see very clearly where the saturation for this amplifier is. So I'm going to bring it up again from minus 29 to minus 25. Increase. Enter. Okay, now we're up to 3.24 watts. And this is a 4 watt buck, so this is fine. It's, it's still in the expected range. minus 23, and we're up at 4.47 watts. Now the question is, did it move up incrementally? Because what I should be doing, I should move up, say, half a dB on the input and make sure that I get half a dB on the output. And as long as it stays in step, you know that you're in the usable range for the amplifier. Just see where we are. Let's go over to bring it up again to minus 21. Yes, and we're up in the 5 watt range now. Um, I put my hand on the buck and I can feel it warm. Once we go over the manufacturer's recommended power output, there is some danger of damaging these bucks because they have power amplifiers inside and the more power you push into them, the hotter the power amplifiers become. And when they go over their design limits, they can in fact destruct and kill the product. But Let's look for one more and see if we can bring it down to minus 20. We can. It's not growing up very much, so we're well into saturation at this stage. So I'm going to turn it off now. 
so that I don't do any damage to this part. There we are, and now it's dropped down to zero. So as I said, I have prepared a spreadsheet. I'm just going to show the spreadsheet in a couple of minutes, and that way we can see clearly what saturation is and how we measured it. In this spreadsheet, I tried to show graphically where I felt the end of the usable range is. This is for a different bug than the one that uh, I just had on the bench. Nevertheless, it shows quite clearly where saturation is reached and the end of the usable power level. Okay, so looking at the left-hand column, the input level, minus 30, you saw that on the modem a few minutes ago, and that corresponds to 1.49 watts. Now, it was easier for me to do it in dBm, so I put a dBm column in there, and then simply using Excel, subtracting, in this case, 32.9, 32.14 from 32.9, showing an increase of 0.85. Now, although this is not 100% accurate, it does give you a pretty good idea of the change. So moving down to minus 28, we've got an increase of 0 0.9, minus 27, 0 0.9, minus 26, 0 0.9, minus 25, 0.8, and it's starting to change at this stage. So I put my colors green for safe and the light orange to show that we're on the limit. So again, it's, we're looking at a 4.19 wattage output. It's probably still usable. But beyond that, look at the difference. We go from 0 0.8 to 0 0.6, 0 0.6 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. In other words, even though we're putting in the 1 dB increment, we're not getting 1 dB output. So this shows very clearly at that stage that we are in fat in saturation. And even though it goes down to a total of 6.25 watts, that's nowhere in the usable range. So it's just of academic interest to say, well, this is the maximum power of this buck, even though we cannot use it.